guys. So welcome back to the leadership series. Um, this is practical leadership and um, we are on lesson 4.3, spiritually nuke proof. The US government has a defense control system that we all know as DEFCON, right? And um, it's a numbering system. And in that numbering system, the, um, the different forces of the United States government and the United States military are triggered into action, okay? So DEFCON 5 is the least um, scary, and then it goes all the way up to DEFCON 1, which is active nuclear war, okay? So I'm going to, the Holy Spirit urged me to look into this system, and I was like, okay, because <laughs> I, I, I don't really care. So um, I looked into it, and as I did, then I realized why, because there's so many parallels with spiritual warfare. Okay, so we're going to look at their DEFCON system so that we can properly um, understand it, and then we're going to go into spiritual DEFCON systems, okay? DEFCON readiness, we're going to read from the bottom up, okay? The readiness condition of DEFCON, okay, number five, the meaning of it is normal readiness. The jobs are the lowest state of readiness. Number four, above normal readiness um, in the jobs, it switches to increased intelligence collection and strengthened security measures. Number three, Air Force can mobilize in 15 minutes and the jobs are increased force readiness for the entire military. Okay, then we've got number two, DEFCON 2, armed forces are ready to deploy in less than six hours and the next step is nuclear war. So everyone's preparing for nuclear war. Then we've got DEFCON 1, maximum readiness and immediate response. The jobs nuclear war has begun or is imminent. Now, I made my own spiritual DEFCON, okay? So we're going to read through what this one says. Number five, normal readiness, armor is on, Bible is read, worship music is on. DEFCON 4, above normal readiness, staying observant and aware of the enemy. DEFCON 3, angels are standing by, pray for the empowerment of your angels. DEFCON 2, you sense something is coming. Ramp up your prayers for your angels and against enemies. DEFCON 1, maximum readiness and immediate response. This is intense faith-filled prayer versus the enemy live time. Okay. Okay, so I know by the clues around me what DEF CON I'm sitting at, okay? Um, for instance, the dogs might be super tense and uh, refuse to tinkle in the place where I expect them to go. Um, they're very agitated. Uh, I know demons are lurking around when that happens. Uh, so I would automatically just jump to DEF CON 3. Boof. Okay, we're going to be doing prayers for my angels because we need to get this area cleaned up. Okay. If I smell a demon in the house that tagged along home with my theater kid, which happens a lot, I just jump instantly to DEFCON 1, fight them, get them out, and move on. Um, there are moments and days when I will allow myself to slip back to DEFCON 4, but I am never ever at DEFCON 5. Ever. Okay. Since October 2023, the waves of demons have been coming in aggressively in masses, in little waves. And I've seen a huge uptick in rogue attacks and a huge uptick in darkness being removed from where I am. Now it's January 2024 and all of my leadership team has this same sense that something very dark is imminent. Something's coming, okay? I think as a whole, the church right now we are sitting on DEFCON 2, maybe DEFCON 1. As individuals, your situation is going to go up and down that scale from time to time. The Lord does give us some breaks, which is great. I think a, a great number of you watching might be currently at DEFCON 5, which is excellent because so many in the church are not even dressed for the battle. They're not even engaged at all. Okay, so it's excellent, but we're trying to raise your game, right? So some of you are at DEFCON 4 or 3. That's where you sit. Not many are at DEFCON 2, and a rare, rare few are at DEFCON 1. And the reason I understand that is because when I surveyed all the leaders, I saw that was true. Not that many were sitting at DEFCON 1. Now, the trouble is this. The enemy is nuking the heck out of the church, okay? But we're not fighting. 
We're not responding like we're in DEFCON 1. Um, we need to pull together as the army that we are intended to be, and we need to fight. We need to fight seriously, and we fight in prayer, okay? Why? For the sake of the church. I might be good, and you might be good, but we got to pray for the bigger global church because this entire fight is for the souls of the lost. And the only way it's going to change is for the church to heal and to get better and then to respond properly. In your personal situation today, you might drift between DEFCON 3 and 1 in a single day. Or maybe even this month, you might be sitting at 3 and thinking, hey, I'm doing great. And then something comes in, they try to take the legs out from under you. you got to just jump to 1, right? In order to do this, how do we get from jumping from five or four or three or two to, to get into active war and jump in there? Okay, the, that's what we're trying to figure out. So you need to have a grasp on your authority in Christ, okay? And having true faith in what you're praying about. To be nuke-proof, we need good preparation, solid defense, and then we need amazing aggressive offense, okay? You have been given an overview of the prep and the defense in a lot of these lessons. In that entire, you know, if you just go to the folder of um, spiritual warfare, there's tons of different things you should be understanding. But we're going to focus on aggressive offense for a little bit here, a couple lessons, because it is super, super undertaught, and it is super, super needed. You're going to need it for you, and you're going to need it for all those people you watch over. God's people, God's future lambs, okay? You know why? Because the closer we get to rapture, the more evil and darkness and wickedness that is going to come into this world, the more demons that are going to infill people, the fight is always going to get more in tense the closer we get to the end. So the more tools you have and the more confident you are in using them and the more practice you get now before it gets worse, the better. Okay. So if you learn nothing else from me, learn this. This will save you. This will save you from a lot of pain and trauma and horrible things that could go wrong. If you can just fight back, you don't need to go through that. You can stay in the happy bubble with me. Okay. So I was told this, this is very important. I was told that what we learn and experience in our life before we go, combined with the ability to have hupomone, that perseverance through God's power, we have to connect with him to get that power, right? And then the ability, combining that with the ability to fight in the spiritual realm with tenacity against TMS. On this side of the veil, all of that on this side of the veil will affect our ability to fight when we come back to help the church or to help the rebels, whatever stage you're in. What we learn here and now affects the fight in the future, okay? Um, just like Elisha, there are more of us than there are with them. So no matter what you hear or see that might like give you a twinge of like, oh, I, I didn't know that was a thing. Or, oh, that freaks me out. There's so many demons or whatever. Don't think like that. Think like there are more of us than there are with them. And us understanding what they do gives us the tools to undermine them, to stop them in their tracks so they cannot negatively impact us. Okay? So let's jump into scripture and learn how to be nuke-proof. This one's going to be a little different than the older ones. This is going to go scripture and then helpful hints and then scripture and helpful hints because that's just the way this one has to be. When we are learning to observe, 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert for the enemy. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Ephesians 4, 27, give no opportunity to the devil. Quickly defeat them and do not give the devil a foothold. Now, here's the bullet points of what this is kind of going to connect the spiritual to that. Okay, I'm going to get deeper into some of these things that are observable in the next lesson. The le next lesson is going to be quite long. The next two, I think, are quite long. But they're very detailed in how to observe some different things to understand what's going on behind the veil. Okay? 
Now, here's a few pointers to get you rolling though, because it wouldn't be fair to give you no information about it. Cause you might be seeing stuff and be like, oh, well now I get it. So you may sense or see or notice things that are different in your environment. As soon as you feel a shift, begin to pray. If there is a vague white fog, like a mist between you and other things, and there is not a logical reason for this, it could be an angel or a protective boundary keeping you safe. You may see light, rainbows, heavenly lights, or darkness or shadows or lurking creatures. If so, react accordingly. Thank the Lord for the evidence of the angels and pray aggressively at the enemy to have them gone. Trust your pets. They are like Balaam's donkey. They can see behind the veil. And if they are reacting to things you cannot see, then pray for spiritual protections and pray aggressively in full faith that they are removed or be thankful to the Lord for the presence of the angels. Recall that every good and perfect thing is from the Lord. That means everything else is being influenced by the enemy. Pray over these negative areas. So in the area of being confident, Joshua 1, 9, since God is with me wherever I go, wherever I go is holy. Um, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Matthew 28, 18, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Weapons not of flesh, but divine power. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. 1 John 4, 4. You are from God, and Jesus in you is greater than the devil. You are of God, little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Bullet points of things to consider. Remember, God is always with you. Use Jesus name. You have been given this authority by the power that is in his blood that overcame them when he conquered death. Speak truth at them that you are a child of God and that they have no access to you. Tell them to leave in Jesus' name. Focus on worship and scripture through any troubles. Ask the Lord for guidance, protection, and provisions. Trust that he will provide. The verses that go with how to fight. 2 Corinthians 2.11 Don't be ignorant of their purposes. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. When you look into the Greek, devices is actually their thoughts, their purposes, what they're intending to do. Colossians 3.17, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So here's some things to consider. Ask forgiveness for anything before praying to eradicate TMS so that you are pure before the Lord. Take a moment and get focused and dialed in with the Lord before you try to fight in prayer against TMS. First, pray to bind and remove the devil's efforts and pray to empower the angels to have God's full power and their full authority to protect and take them to the pit. I typically raise my right hand because that is the side of God's power and I request his power to come down through me and to be used as a conduit for him. With my left hand, I aim it at the demon or spirit. It is important that you are not holding any electronics. It will not work. If I'm in a public place, then I just do my hands very subtly in my lap or off to my sides as if holding my arms down, but I twist my hand into the proper direction to aim it at what I'm seeing. I also pray in my head. I am not on display at all. I am very covert. Pray as the Holy Spirit guides. If you notice a demon with a person, do not touch the person. They can jump right onto you. Pray the demon is bound first if you need to touch the person. When confronted with a non-Christian that is likely oppressed, do not touch them until after you have silently prayed the demons are bound, then pray over them. 
understand that if the person does not want to be rid of the demons and you pray the demons off of them instead of binding them to the person to keep them away from you, that it can be worse for that person. Like Matthew 12, 43 to 45 warns that a vacant spiritual life, when a demon is cast out, seven more can return that are more wicked. You have to be careful. Keep your surroundings as purified as possible. Holy oil, music, entertainment that you choose, things that you do with your free time, words you say, etc. Pray over strangers as you interact with them. Pray their chains break and that they can be saved or that they are kept firm in their faith for what is to come. Pray until you are released from the burden to pray. This could be a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, a few months. Pray until released. Realistic expectations. Mark 9, 28 to 29. There are rules that are not plain to see that apply to some types of demons. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So high order demons can be days and days, weeks or months to pray away. And it takes praying consistently and having others joining you. Near is ideal, but far if that's all you've got. You may need to pray and fast. You may need to get another person to pray with you in that space. If praying over another situation, do not make promises. Be sure you pray that it, if it is God's will, as referenced in the dream from the Workers of Missions video from 6.13.23. Be aware that some healing takes a lot of time. Understand that the person being prayed over also has responsibilities in this process. If they continue to live in sin or have unconfessed sin or refuse to let go of certain addictive things, if they have been involved in the occult or they dabbled in the occult light with yoga or games, certain um, places of entertainment, certain types of movies or book, or they are not willing to walk away from the world you may be able to help them a little, but not fully. Like a demon might go, but then return. Be direct to anyone who may have allowed demons, darkness, or evil into them. Ask them what they might have gotten into to open up a foothold and let them know they need to want it gone and repent of allowing it in. Ask respectfully from the Lord if it is his timing what you are requesting. Be patient if his timing is different than yours. Pray until the burden is lifted. Even if you don't see evidence that it is gone, know that the Lord has declared it done when you are at peace and release. It isn't the literal name of Jesus but the authority of Jesus Christ and his allowing us to have power through using his name and our faith using it, accessing God's full power. This can only be used by an authentic disciple who is dialed in with true faith. Holy oil is just plain olive oil if you have no faith. It is about applying the power of God in faith. You have access to God's power to overcome everything on Team S. Never forget. So that's kind of bold, but we're going to get into deeper stuff in the next two lessons. That is really stuff you can physically see, sense, and understand. So I hope that helps you this time, and I'll give you some more next time.